This video contains spoilers for the book Predator by Alexander Kontorovich, which is set in the Escape from Tarkov universe. Most people's first impressions of the conflict in Tarkov are often vague. What we know is that a war rages on inside its borders, started by the actions of a shady company guilty of dodgy business deals and scientific research, bribing officials and even killing whistleblowers. This video will deal with the fragments of information gleaned from official documentation and the Predator series of novels set in the Tarkov universe about the start of the Tarkov conflict. There is a first-hand account of the initial days of the conflict, from a man no different from you or I, who is forced to face not only the demons of Tarkov, but his own as well. Dennis. As a programmer, Dennis was employed by the tech division of Terra Group. Working on an important project, he and his team were working overtime to get it finished. The project was so important that the entire team was set up in a hotel so that they could work more efficiently. He noticed that armed guards were being posted on the ground floor, and his bosses told him it was because of some increased criminal activity in the area, and that they were just protecting their employees. When the project was finally finished, the company started busing the employees back to their office in the city of Tarkov but insisted that the IT and admin staff stay behind. During a lapse in security, Dennis and a few others snuck onto another bus and left without much hassle. It was then that he is confronted with a taste of the stark reality Tarkov had become. His favourite cafe is deserted. On his way home, people are packing cars full of stuff and speeding away. The news tells him that while he's been working away in the hotel, armed conflicts have been raging throughout the city beginning with top executives in private companies fleeing Tarkov and many of the civilian population being evacuated. Great, so he'd unknowingly stood away on a bus going right into a war zone. The report said there was also widespread looting by gangs and going outside should be avoided. From this point on, Dennis's life would change drastically. He essentially has to learn how to survive in an area going through a mini apocalypse. Within the next few chapters, we can see how the city itself degenerates over an extremely short space of time. Dennis decides to try and find food, but this leads to a tense encounter with a group of armed bear PMCs, who take pity on him and wonder why he's even still inside the city at all. We learn that in a little over a week, the city has become a battleground, the borders are now closed. They ransack the pockets of a man they've just killed and leave which would become a common sight to Dennis over the next few days. He goes through many struggles in order to survive during this time, but none would test him more than the brutal murder of his two friends at the hands of local thugs. He can't believe how fast the city has degenerated and how his life has changed. After narrowly escaping from the thugs, he's captured by a gang of scavengers. The gang are an organised group of thugs that send out raiding parties into houses and tower blocks to ransack them of anything valuable. The teams consist of some armed enforcers and other hostages like Dennis who are forced to enter the houses and bring out anything worth keeping, while also acting as canaries for any traps or unwelcome surprises. The loot is then ferried back to the head of the gang for his own ends. This existence is brutal. The hostages are kept in appalling conditions and fed meagre rations of tinned fish. Twice a day, they go out and loot houses. It's astonishing that in no more than two weeks, organised street criminals have set up sophisticated and well-oiled looting operations. I suppose the early bird catches the worm, as they say. To cut a long story short, Dennis manages to escape from the scav gang and sets himself up in the basement of a small tower block. He befriends a local trader, who agrees to trade with him from time to time. On one of his many scavenging missions, Dennis visits the apartment of one of his old programmer friends and is promptly captured by some hooded men. Led blindfolded into a dark room, he meets another man captured by the hooded figures, a local policeman who's apparently been there for days. He introduces himself as Ivan and the two strike up a friendship. After some time, he tells Dennis of what he knows about how the conflict began. We were already well prepared for something of the sort, Ivan says, referring to the conflict starting. There had been two special training courses, there were new buses in the bus park, a lot of them in fact, more than the city will ever need. 
Everybody knew we were getting ready for something, but nobody knew what. A friend of mine was a local beat cop, said they'd been sent all around the residential buildings to throw together a plan for who should be evacuated, and in what order. So you knew all about it, Dennis says. I wouldn't say that, says Ivan. How can I explain? No, nobody knew anything, but a lot of us suspected something. You could feel the tension in your bones. This, I can tell you. Anybody working in the public sector, and most of their families, were evacuated on the first day. Moreover, from what I saw, it wasn't just the high-ranking professionals that they took. It seemed more like they were trying to clear the whole city. For what? asks Dennis. Who the fuck knows? Nobody told us anything. I'm just glad I managed to get my family on one of the buses. Ivan sighed, and then went on talking. From what he said, it turned out that the powers that be had planned to evacuate the whole city over five days. That was why, in his opinion, rumours had been spread that some sort of catastrophe had occurred in Tarkov. Are you saying there wasn't one? says Dennis. As far as I know, that's all bullshit. Think about it. If the shit had really hit the fan, absolutely everybody would have freaked out and been running around like their butts were on fire. But in fact, the work went on exactly at the same rate as the first day. No one batted an eyelid. That doesn't follow. As Ivan explained it, all the work to evacuate the population could have been completed on time. That's what everyone expected and what everyone was preparing for. He'd seen the plan of deployment for his department with his own eyes. It certainly didn't look like the plan had been thrown together at the last minute. It was a properly drafted and printed official document. However, somebody somewhere had screwed everything up. First there was a big explosion somewhere in the centre of town. Then, the evacuation buses had been attacked in several places simultaneously. The unknown attackers had opened fire on the patrol cars escorting the buses too. There had been casualties, although nobody had managed to work out exactly how many. Then there was some kind of flash, Ivan went on. A blue flame across the sky, and all communications went to hell. Our mobile phones stopped working. Some of our radios burnt out, and from the ones that survived, all we could hear was the group closest to us. We did manage to find out that the troops approaching the city were met with mines and machine gun fire. Then we all freaked out too. The guys started to split up, some of them running off to their families, and the rest of us headed for the transport police headquarters. We were shot at along the way. Why and by whom, I don't know. I got hit in the leg. The lads dragged me into a basement and went to get help. Then these guys came along. Ivan's revelation to startling. It would appear that the authorities knew that there was going to be some big event about to happen. From what he said, we can pick out a key detail. The blue flash. He says that the flash happened sometime after the explosion. This blue flash apparently knocked out all communications. Can we assume that this was some type of electromagnetic pulse? We know that certain areas of Tarkov are riddled with radiation, and an accompanying EMP after an explosion could point to some form of nuclear detonation, possibly by terror group. But then again, wouldn't we see a lot more destruction and devastation in the wake of a nuclear blast? Another possibility is a non-nuclear electromagnetic pulse, or NNEMP. An NNEMP is a weapon-generated electromagnetic pulse without the use of nuclear technology. NNEMP generators can be carried as the payload of bombs, cruise missiles and drones with diminished radiation effects without the consequences of deploying nuclear weapons. Nearly all NNEMP generators used as weapons require chemical explosives as their initial energy source. The electromagnetic pulse from an NNEMP weapon must come from within the weapon itself, whereas nuclear weapons generate the EMP as a secondary effect. These facts limit the range of NNEMP weapons, but allow for finer target discrimination. The effect of small NNEMP munitions has proven to be sufficient for certain terrorist or military operations. Could this be the cause of the mysterious blue flash? If this was an EMP as the result of some non-nuclear explosion, it would explain why there isn't total devastation. If an EMP had been triggered in the Tarkov area, it would make sense that society would rapidly break down. Without anything electronic, daily life would change very quickly into the degenerate landscape we and Dennis now see before us. It would seem that in order to protect their secrets, terror group detonated some kind of device, leading to open conflict, the widespread use of USEC PMCs, and the influx of bears trying to stop them. And of course, 
civilians like Dennis caught in the middle. It is then no wonder that the lowlifes and criminals quickly tried to take control. Once society had completely broken down, it was just another gap in the market. As to exactly what kind of device Terror Group detonated and what its purpose was is still a mystery. What is clear is it was their actions that began this conflict, and it's still their actions that dictate what happens inside the Tarkov perimeter. They were obviously prepared to roll up their operation in the area, but something unexpected happened and plans were quickly altered. Many people lost their lives. I'm hopeful that more details about the beginning of this conflict will emerge in future updates, and I'm still reading Voice Behind, the second official book in the series. If you have any thoughts or theories about this topic, please leave a comment. Thanks for watching.